And so what is bale grazing? Uh, simply a strategy to winter feed where we're asking the cows to walk to the feed versus us taking the feed to the cows. And so bale grazing pretty much is defined where you're picking a nutrient deficient uh, spot on your farm or your ranch. What I mean by nutrient deficient, I mean a, a, an area that may not uh, have adequate fertility and you want to just move the facility to that area for the subsequent growing season. And so you may choose one or two spots on your farm or your ranch. And so you'll set up bale grazing sites at two or three locations to just uh, allow those animals to be out of the dry lot pen. It really is, and so we're really capturing uh, deposition of manure nutrients, in this case, nitrogen and phosphorus. So there's various ways of setting up the bale and the bale and grids. Um, as you can see, these are on their end. There is other producers that put them on their side. Uh, there's also different combinations of feed type, and so we can have straight grass, we might have a grass legume bale, we might have a green feed bale. So those are all options for producers. Uh, some producers too will put up uh, in a line of hay bales, they'll, they'll alternate maybe every fifth or eighth bale as a straw bale, just trying to, to uh, cheapen the cost of their feed. So really I guess the the uh, the approach or the objective is is to minimize wastage and so that will depend on the on the producer but in my mind it's all about um, having the right number of cattle out there and you'll have to play with that um, maybe having 50 cows at a time or maybe 100 cows or maybe 200 cows and just look at what the residue is and how much is left behind uh, some of the the uh, information that's been printed based on some of the bale grazing work we've done at Western Beef. Uh, and with producer cooperators is that what is the uh, what is the grid system and so from that we're suggesting that bale spacing should be about 40 feet apart and that would be about 25 bales per acre and that will differ uh, really depending on what soil zone you're in or what part of the province you're in um, certainly uh, you want to you want to play with that that suggestion to see what works for best for you on your farm or your operation so we did talk a little bit about stock density. So what is the right number of cows to be out there, uh, cows on a unit area? And some of the work that we've done at Western Beef, we've, we've really ramped up that stock density to that 800, 850 cow days per acre. Why? Because we really want to look at the impact of this extensive system on soil nutrient profile. And so, yes, we found elevated levels of nitrogen and phosphorus, and so from that work we found that yes, you have to be aware that there's an awful lot of manure nutrients. Uh, most of the nitrogen is coming from the urine and a lot of the phosphorus is in the fecal material that you have to be, uh, you know, plan how that manure, manure uh, deposition is going to impact that grazing site. And I mentioned already today that, that there's a producer that, that uses our recommendation of giving those cows three to four days of bale grazing feed. Uh, so restricting them with, with some type of, of fencing to concentrate uh, utilization of the feed, not allowing them to wander around the whole grazing site and pick and choose as they want. You're trying to contain them to that three or four days of feed you've allocated using portable electric fence to contain them. And so we suggest three to four days. You know, you work that out, whatever that is on a dry matter basis, 30, 35 pounds of something for a, a moderate sized beef cow. And then uh, what I've seen other producers do is they've fluctuated that on uh, maybe a one or two day or maybe going to a five or six day depending on their comfort level and on whether they're getting maximum utilization of the feed and less wastage. I do have a producer friend of mine who does this three day uh, allocation on a three four rotation where he's given them three days of feed and they clean up that three days and then he gives them three days of feed but gives them that fourth and extra day to come back and back graze and so uh, with that type of a uh, mentality those cows are getting trained that that maybe uh, we should we should uh, smarten up here and go back and back graze and clean up as much as we should uh, because we are only going to get three days of feed so we see a lot of, of producers and they're very ingenious and they'll modify these systems to try to work for their operations wherever they live but real world kicks in and you know that right so it, so when it gets colder right they're going to burn through that three days that you gave them and you'll have to move the wire after two days yeah or if it gets you know or whatever so you have to be flexible really flexible there's also uh, some questions about you know 
um, should I wrap my bales with, with, uh, with twine or should it be net wrap? Uh, I know that, that there's differing producer opinions is that maybe they waste a little bit more with the twine on there or maybe you want to take that twine off before the uh, frosty cold days of winter happen and so versus trying to pull the twines when it's frozen. Uh, net wrap, certainly there's, there's producer experiences where it works quite well to contain the feed in that net wrap and so maybe reduce wastage. Question is, is anybody using uh, sisal or hemp or biodegradable net wrap? You know, I, I, I really don't know. Um, to me, it makes, it's a no-brainer. Talk to Larry. Um, because what we're finding also is that we're finding evidence of these twines and these net wraps in the stomachs of cows. Right. And so uh, there's, there's the, with my vet friends across the street at Western College of Vet Med, uh, there is some evidence of cows getting into big time trouble from ingestion of that that net wrap. So it's 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 uh, one of the one of the disadvantages. Uh, some of the challenges of setting up a system. I guess what I will say is is um, do your planning in the fall. <laughs> Uh, September is probably the best time to be doing it. I know we're all busy in September. Whether you purchase the feed off the farm or whether you grow the feed off on the farm, uh, both of those, there may be more advantageous to, to grow the feed in the field, make the round bale, don't even put twine on it, just drop it out of the bale and then the cows come out and they bale graze right there. So there's some advantages there. Um, I guess we talk about bale grazing, we're saying set up the site and then maybe a month or two months or three months later come with your cows and actually manage them on the site. And you see all types of differences from that where producers may only be putting out two or three days of feed and still starting the tractor and so that's probably a disadvantage. Um, so I think you know some of the disadvantages are you may not, you may have too few cows and so folks I've talked to that don't have a good experience with bale grazing is they've had maybe too few cows and there's too much wastage and that really that really is discouraging and it is a different approach and it's all about adoption and, and comfort level for the producer. Maybe an advantage of bale grazing in this area is that we've uh, we'll get a lot of snow here like uh, people in Vanderhoof and and what we found is that when the snow gets you know about this high or something we don't have to put electric fence out because they'll just they'll kind of they don't they won't trudge through the snow to get to the next bale until they've kind of cleaned this bale up and then they uh, then they'll just kind of go to the next one and sometimes they'll do like a few in a row like this and they won't graze in these perfect rows but it gets used pretty efficiently which is nice. I think just to to really summarize so what are the advantages of bale grazing is that you are depositing the nutrients out here on that on that winter feeding site versus the nitrogen and phosphorus being left in the dry lot pen in the manure pack and it being lost over those successive months and so there may be less nitrogen and phosphorus in that manure that you're hauling with that equipment out to that cropping land or that that hay pasture or whatever so you're, you're taking advantage of, of urine being deposited on those on those wintering sites right away mm -hmm.